The big Illustrator update we've been waiting years for. Pfft, we wish. Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be looking at the brand new Adobe Illustrator 2021 update. You can also download a free template file from the description below this video that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. Okay, I'm going to pass you over to Rory now who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So the first feature we're going to look at is the new colour theme picker. Now we have a simple design set up here with a few different colours and basically we can use this new feature within the recolor artwork dialog box. Now if you're not familiar with recolor artwork, we can access this by going up to edit, edit colours and then recolor artwork and you'll see we have the colours within our selected design here that we can edit via this color wheel if we want to, to change the hue or the brightness or saturation. But the new feature we're looking at is this option up here that says color theme picker. So what I'm going to do is just move this dialog box off to the right hand side. I'm going to click color theme picker and you'll see wherever I hover over is going to highlight and it depends on the grouping. So we have some boxes here with different colors and we've grouped these together as two separate color palettes. Now if I simply click on this first option you'll see that my entire design here is changing based on these colors and it does a really good job of matching the various brightnesses or saturations depending on what the colors were in the first place. I could click the option to the left and it's going to change again and this is just a really easy way of completely changing the color scheme of a specific design. Now the really cool thing about this is we don't have to just do this with vector objects that already contain a color, we can do this with raster images as well. Well, we have an image just imported here and if I click on that you can see it's even able to pick up the colors from this image. Now we're always able to edit these afterwards as well as we would with the normal recolor options. If I just click and drag you can see all of these colors are going to move together and that's just going to adjust the hue of the design. I'll just press command Z. I could equally unlink them with this icon and move them individually of one another and I can also toggle this to be brightness as well so I could really lighten up some of these colors if I wanted to. We basically have plenty control with this option but the fact that we can completely change our color scheme based on another color scheme or an image is a really useful new feature. Now moving on we're going to take a look at smart glyph snapping. So you'll see we have some live text here and we also have an object. Now this object is actually locked. You can see I can't click and move it. Another new feature is the ability to lock objects and be able to still unlock them without having to go to your layers or a menu. I can do that by going up to Illustrator and Preferences, or this will be Edit Preferences if you're on a PC, then go to Selection and Anchor Display, and the top option here says Select and Unlock Objects on Canvas. So if I check that, click OK, you can see I'm now able to select this object, but I still can't move it around accidentally, so it is still locked. However, we have a small padlock icon now, which if I click is going to unlock it, and I'm now able to move it. I'm just going to go over to my layers and disable the background layer so we can see these new alignment options slightly more clearly. But basically we are now able to align objects to specific points of live text. So before we were only really able to align it to the overall bounding box. If I go over to my properties and click the three dots underneath our character section, you'll see down at the bottom we have a bunch of new icons. Now I have all of these enabled and what this means is if I grab my circle, if I drag this down towards the bottom of the text, you can see we're getting a green line where the baseline of this text is. I could resize this and we also get the cap height here, or if I extend this even further, we get the ascender line. This also goes for the X height, so this is the height of the lowercase characters, and if I extend this down the way, we also get the descender line. So this is really useful if you're wanting to make precise alignments with the text itself without having to basically outline it and do it that way. What I'm also able to do if I scale this down is select both the object and our text and if I go to my align panel if I click the three lines in the top right hand side we've got this option that says align to glyph bounds. If I select point text I can now use my alignment options to align this object again to the text itself and not just the bounding box. So this is another very useful feature that's been added to Adobe Illustrator. Let's move on though. I'm going to turn on our background layer again and the last 
last couple of features also relate to text. First of all, we have the new text height options. So again, we have some live text here and I've got a simple rectangle in the background. You'll notice up in my control panel, this has a height of 80 pixels and I'm going to set my text to be the exact same height. So to do that, I'm going to select it. I'll go back up to my control panel and click on character. And what I can do is click the small menu icon in the top right hand side. And we have an option here that now says show font height options. So if I click that, we get a new drop down box at the top. At the moment, this is set to EM box and that's your default text size option. But if I drop this down, you'll see we have a few more options here. So we have one for cap height, one for X height, as well as ICF box. So in this case, I'm going to opt for cap height and you can see the text size value has changed now. But if I double click into here and type in 80, hit enter, you can see this is now sized exactly the same as the rectangle in behind. So this is a really useful way to make some precise text formatting based on specific heights, especially if you're dealing with smaller text and you don't want the lowercase characters going below a certain height, which is the case in things like packaging design, where you want text to still be legible when printed. Moving on to the last feature we're going to look at today, and that is the new area type options. So we have a text box here. You can see if I click and drag on the handles of this text box, the text is going to shuffle to fit. It's not going to scale, so press Command and Z. What I'll do is click on my properties panel and down below paragraph you'll see we have an area type section. So the first option is the vertical alignment. I can center this text to the text box vertically and I can also bottom align it or I've got this option to vertically justify so it's going to spread out the lines of text across the height of the entire text box. So what I'm going to do is just vertically center this. I'm also going to click on these three dots where we get some further options and we also have things like inset spacing here. This did exist beforehand, but it's good to know that we can create text boxes with a little bit more control as we're doing here. But that rounds up our favorite new features of the brand new Adobe Illustrator 2021. If you have any questions, then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help.